Hi everybody, welcome to another cooking demonstration and tonight I'm going to be making some miso soup and a bento and I think um, though I was inspired to make this by my friend Julia Buttermore and now I can't find it. It's gone. Oh, it's on the other side of the room. Let me go, go grab it. I was taking a picture of it, and so I wanted to get it in the best light possible. So this is the bento. She said that she wanted to have something about a bento um, with vegetables and sushi. Well, sushi is a little difficult to do on the spur of the moment, so we'll save that for another time. But the bento has all kinds of good things in it. It has tofu that's been cooked in the air fryer, rice. Uh, some really great butternut squash, green beans, Japanese sweet potatoes, and cucumbers. And we'll talk about all of that in a few minutes. So um, I wanted to start with the miso soup because that was the most requested item on her list. And the miso soup, that's a staple. That's something that you can find. I'm sure most of you have had it in any Japanese restaurant you've been in. It's a very common food and it comes free with a lot of meals, but it's really actually a good food. It's a good meal. And, um, you know, it's good to just have it for breakfast. You could have it for breakfast as a meal replacement for the standard American breakfast. And you'll find that in Japan. People do have miso soup in the morning. And so the version that I'm making, you can have any time of the day. And I think it's a great way to use up leftovers. So in this case, You've seen my cooking videos over the past few days and I've had various kinds of leftover items from there. And what I'm gonna do is I have four cups of water, filtered water, and I have made a dashi with kombu. So what is kombu? Kombu is seaweed. And this is how it looked after it steeped in the water and after I brought the water to a boil and then I removed the kombu. So what does it look like if you were to buy it in the store? It looks like this. It's, it's kind of like a papery substance. It, it looks kind of strange, but you know that's kombu and you just take a six or eight inch square, soak it in water for a few minutes and then put it in your um, stock pot with the water, but bring it to a boil and then let it sit there for a few minutes, 10, 15, 20 minutes, and then take it out. Don't let it boil. So I think, um, you know, if you do that, you'll have, uh, you know, your, a good base for your, your broth. Now, the common ingredient in a lot of uh, a miso soup is dashi that's made with fish stock. And it's not really a fish stock, it's an addition of katsubushi, which is bonito flakes. So it's a dried fish flake. And that flavors the miso soup, and that's a, it can be a really strong flavor, and most of us are used to it. So it's not necessarily a bad flavor, but for a plant-based diet way of eating, we don't add fish flavorings to food. So the kombu is a good basis. But then we add something else to replace the umami or the taste that you get from the, um, the katsubushi or the dried bonito flakes. And this uh, umami powder is made from mushrooms. So it has quite a bit of flavor and it kind of gives you that taste that you might be missing by not adding the fish. So we're gonna put a teaspoon of that in there. And I ordered this on Amazon. I haven't found it in any stores. Uh, it lasts for a long time and I keep it in the freezer so that it'll, it will last for a long time. So that's that. So I've got this in my soup pot and I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna stir it around a little to dissolve it. Now, the classic miso soup has wakame seaweed. It's another form of seaweed. Seaweed is very healthy, so if you can grab some and, and eat it, it's, it's a good, it's a health food. A little bit of this goes a long way. It's dried seaweed, and if you can see in my bowl, there's not very much, and I'm gonna show you what happens to it while we're making the soup. I'm going to put some cold water in it and just let it steep for a few minutes. So we'll let it steep here. 
and then we'll kind of let this come to a boil so some of these vegetables can start cooking. Let me get the heat turned up a little bit. It's on my burner. <clears throat> so what vegetables can you put in here? Well, the classic soup doesn't really have vegetables in it. Uh, it might have some of the seaweed and some tofu, and that's about it, and some scallions on top. But for today, I'm gonna to use up some leftover vegetables. So what I have here are some mushrooms, and if you want, recall watching, yesterday we made stir fry, and stir fry had mushrooms. So um, those are some of my leftover mushrooms. I also had some carrots, so I just sliced up a carrot. I had some zucchini, and I bought the zucchini today when I was at the store. There's so much beautiful produce around that um, it's, it seems like there's an abundance of produce whereas the shelves are bare of a lot of other things. Well, that was edamame. So I put in the carrots, the zucchini, mushrooms, and I had just this, you know, half a cup, not even of cooked edamame. The edamame is something I had from Monday night when I had, um, I made a salad and I posted a, the salad on there. So um, I put, I had leftover edamame. It was still good, so I put it in there and um, these vegetables are just gonna cook for maybe, you know, five, six minutes, not that long, until I feel like they're cooked pretty well because I don't like to cook things to the point where they're too soft. I like them to still have a little body. So the miso soup, and thanks for those of you who are watching. I appreciate it. I was trying to um, look at my computer at the same time to see the comments, but it's not loading up, so I don't know why. Uh, I guess because it didn't pop up on my husband's Facebook. But anyway, I'll figure it out. I'll have to just look at your comments on the phone. So I've got these vegetables boiling and I have other things that I'm gonna be adding. I do have tofu, this is firm tofu. And it's, uh, usually I use soft tofu, but they didn't have any when I went to the store that I usually go to for that. So I'm using just a firm, not extra firm, but a firm tofu of a brand that I'm familiar with that usually tastes pretty good. So I'll put that in later, after the vegetables cook a little bit. Um, hello, oh, Debbie Storm, hi. Thanks for watching my video. So I'm gonna let this cook for a little while, and while it's cooking, I wanna tell you about the bento, because I think this is pretty cool, that um, one thing about Japanese food is it's so healthy and colorful and bright and it's just a pleasure to cook it it's a pleasure to eat it now this is kind of a, a little bit more fancy than maybe what you would make at home but i just wanted to show off the colors because the key to having a really beautiful bento box is there is a color combination and it's a standard color combination of white red yellow which that's a japanese sweet potato it's kind of yellow this is orange, so that's in that family. Green and black. The black is the black sesame seeds. So those colors you're supposed to find in your bento. So those are all in here. But what are the other ingredients in here? And like I said, I don't have time to do a whole class about all these ingredients. I had a class February the 15th called um, Plant-Based Japanese, and we made some of these dishes in that class. So uh, maybe one day I'll have that class again. I may do it online. I'm, I'm working on that possibility, and I think I've got a, a good idea of how to do that, but it's not ready yet. So what I put in here is um, the rice, which was left over from yesterday. So again, I'm trying to use the things I cook and not make new things every day. And then this tofu, which someone requested that I make air fried, they said popcorn tofu. And so I tried, I didn't want to make popcorn tofu because it always required doing something with um, oil. So this tofu was just extra firm tofu that had been pressed out, meaning the water was pressed out of it. I marinated it in some low sodium soy sauce and rice vinegar, one teaspoon of rice vinegar, three tablespoons of low sodium soy sauce for a couple hours, but you only have to do it for 30 minutes. And then I put a tablespoon of potato starch which is, I get this at the Asian store, but you can buy potato starch in the regular grocery store, uh, in the bulk section, different parts of the store will have it. If you don't have that, you can use corn starch, it's fine. 
and then I shook the tofu and the cornstarch and I put it in the air fryer at 375 for a total of 15 minutes. You could do it longer, but it's very, it's kind of dense. It's kind of, um, when I first got it out, it was really crunchy and it's got a lot of texture to it, which is good because it, it's very meaty and I'm sure it'll be good in leftovers. Then um, I took butternut squash. You could see the, the bright orange. Usually I would use kabocha squash, but I didn't have any, so I used butternut squash. And I peeled it, which is easy to do. With butternut squash, you just take your vegetable peeler and peel the outsides, and then um, it's easy to cut. I cut it into sort of one inch pieces, and then I steamed the butternut squash. I put those pieces in my steamer basket, the same one I used, either last night or the night before, and I steamed it for about 20 minutes total. It took that long to get the butternut squash to be fork tender, where it wasn't falling apart, but it wasn't hard and raw tasting. And then I made a little marinade or a sauce out of tamari. This is the tamari. I had this um, for something else yesterday. And I mixed a little mirin in. Remember, mirin is the rice wine. And then I just uh, put that over the top of it. And I also sprinkled a little bit of this um, togarashi, which is a Japanese red pepper blend, which has, is full of all kinds of different spices in addition to pepper. It has orange peel, black sesame seed, yellow sesame seed, ginger, and uh, Japanese pepper. So when you put that on food, it really wakes it up. It has a really good taste. So that's on the squash. Here's some cucumbers I had left from Tuesday for my salad. They're kind of small. Normally I wouldn't cut them that small for this, but I was wanting to use them up. I sprinkled a little sea salt on them and that kind of pickles them lightly. Then I made some green beans. My green beans, I cook them for four minutes in boiling water to blanch them. I take them out of the boiling water, put them in ice water, and that keeps them this bright color so they stay this nice bright green and they maintain their crunch so they taste really good that way. Then what I did for the topping of the green beans which I really love this. This is a Japanese everyday kind of thing, but a lot of people probably would never do it. We take sesame seeds. These are just, they're already roasted, but they're not freshly roasted. So these white sesame seeds, you toast them in a frying pan, a skillet, until you can smell them. So it doesn't take long. You have to stay there with them or they'll burn. And then once they're toasted, you take them and you put them in this little bowl which is called suribachi. And what it's lined, it's a bowl that's lined with these grooves. It's kind of like a mortar and pestle. And then you take the wooden instrument and you just smash the toasted sesame seeds until they turn into, they really turn into a powder. But they're just full of flavor. This is, you know, what sesame oil, tahini, and everything else with sesame starts with sesame seeds. So the sesame seeds go great on top of the green beans. That's a classic preparation, uh, Japanese style green beans with some kind of sesame dressing. But we don't even have to make a dressing out of it. All we have to do is put the sesame, ground up sesame seeds on the green beans and they taste delicious. And then last but not least, I have Japanese sweet potato. And that's what's yellow. Now the Japanese sweet potato on the outside looks purplish. When you see it in the store, it looks kind of purple. And then you don't really realize that when you bake it, the inside is pale yellow. It's a creamy yellow color. And it tastes really sweet. Whenever we make it in my classes, people are always surprised at how wonderful it tastes. It has a delightful, sweet taste. So give it a try. You might be surprised at how good it is. And for the red, we have the um, cherry tomatoes, grape tomatoes. So it's just it just adds a little color. So, and I like the way they taste. So. That's the bento, if Julia Buttermore watches, she can see this. We could have taken the rice instead of making, just putting the leftover warmed up rice in here, we could have made some sushi rolls uh, with different vegetables inside. I've had a class on how to make um, plant-based sushi and it went really well and I have another one planned in April. If I don't have it in person, I might have to do it in another version. 
but I'll have it one way or the other. Uh, you, if you don't want to use white rice, you can use brown rice. You can make your own brown rice or you could use a prepared brown rice. Trader Joe's has a really good one that's frozen and I'll buy that from time to time and use it. So, um, you know, you don't have to make it from scratch, but remember I had scratch made Japanese rice last night for our stir fry. So a lot of the things you see here are things I had left over. I did have butternut squash in the refrigerator that I bought last week and um, I steamed that and I'll have plenty to eat for a couple other meals and it's very healthy. I'm gonna see what comment this is. Um, Kendra Gibson, I've learned so much from you. Hello from Michigan. Oh, thank you, Kendra, I appreciate it. And I'm so glad people are watching. I um, apologize for the awkwardness of my live streaming. My skills are not all that great, but I don't care. I think at this point in what's going on in our lives, you know, connecting with people in any way we can is a good thing to do. And if anything I do brightens your day in any way, then it was worth it. And I'm gonna be making this food anyway. My husband's here, my son, who has been going through some difficulties, has been here, and so I have people to eat the food, and I'm working out an arrangement with a friend who um, is having, he's struggling with his health, and um, some of the meals I make, I might, uh, he may get some of those. So it's, it's good to cook, and cooking is, um, it's a fun activity. So if you're home and you have time and you want to cook, by all means, get in the kitchen and make things. I'm going to post the recipes for all of these things after I'm through with the video tonight. I do have my tofu to add to the soup. Um, I cut it up really small because whenever you go to a restaurant, the tofu's cut up really small, isn't it? It's not gigantic pieces, so I'm going to put... I'm gonna put about half of this in here because I don't want to overwhelm it with tofu. That would be too much. This is just four cups of stock. Um, how I cut my tofu in perfect little squares. My secret is to cut the block of tofu in half, cut each half in half, cut each half in half again until I have a bunch of planks and then I cut all the planks in half. So that sounds strange, but it works really well. And then they're all the same size. So I have all the vegetables. Remember, we had mushrooms, carrots, uh, zucchini, some leftover edamame, and the uh, dashi stock made with the seaweed. We have the taki umami powder, and that's the basis for our miso soup. But we haven't added the miso. So we use miso. There's all kinds of different miso products. The one that I use all the time is it's actually an American version. It's Miso Master Organic Yellow Miso. You can buy this in Whole Foods, Central Market, grocery stores, Asian markets. There are a lot of places that sell this. You can also get all different other kinds. This is an organic miso with reduced sodium. I picked up, I think I picked this up at an Asian market. So you can try that one. There's one that I'm dying to get. It's called Yama. Jiroshu, Yama Jiroshu Organic White Miso. They use this at Hatsuyuki Hand Roll Bar in their miso soup, and it's really great. They have the best miso soup ever. So, um, and I, I was all set to go to H Mart, the big Asian grocery store, uh, last week, and I never made it there. I was gonna go there on the 14th, and that's when a lot of things started happening, so I didn't go because my class that was supposed to happen tomorrow was canceled, so I really didn't need it anymore. So anyway, um, that's, that's the, um, the other ingredient is miso. So we have to add the miso. Well, if you were to just put the miso in the soup, just out of the container, what do you think would happen? It's really, it's kind of, you know, pasty. What would happen is it wouldn't dissolve and you would find it at the bottom of your pot and it would just be in big clumps. So what we do is we take out some of the broth, try not to get too many of the solids out, but when we take the broth out of the soup and we have it in a smaller area, it's just in this little ramekin instead of in this huge pot, then you find that the miso will start dissolving very easily. So I've got the miso, it's dissolving, it tastes, it smells great. Um, if you didn't know, 
Miso is just made from soybeans. It's made from fermented soybeans. There's a huge process where the soybeans are prepared, processed, and aged for a period of time um, until they turn into this paste. And talk about umami and uh, different properties that are actually good probiotic properties. Miso is really a health food. So now it's kind of a nice uh, consistency. We're gonna put it in the in with the rest of the broth. There are still a few solids, so I didn't want to spend all day showing you how to do that. So now I have the miso in here, I have all the vegetables, and remember the seaweed that we were doing at the very beginning? It was just little black things. Well, in that period of time, the seaweed turned into these, you know, large pieces of green seaweed. So we're gonna put some of those in our soup. Now, we don't wanna to put too many because we'll have, our soup will, will be, um, you will just have too much seaweed in it. We'll put all that I put in this container because it wasn't that much. But I remember when I first started making this and I didn't know what I was doing, <clears throat> I would just make all the seaweed and it made like a huge bowl and I didn't know what to do with it. So now I've kind of learned, you know, less is better with the seaweed. And then last but not least, the miso soup tastes really good with scallions. So I'm gonna put some scallions in the soup and then I'm gonna put some on top. All right, so now I have my beautiful pot of miso soup. I think you can all see it. It has these fresh vegetables that have been cooking while we've been talking. And then it has the seaweed, it has the mushrooms, it has um, you know all the different flavorings. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put it in a bowl. This is a Japanese soup bowl. Don't use it for rice. And it doesn't make a huge serving, so you don't have to eat a lot. The Japanese wouldn't fill it up all the way to the top either. That's kind of a thing, not to fill things up all the way to the top. Let's see if I'm missing any comments. Oh, hi, hi Kendra. Oh, Lisa, hi Lisa. You need to go to the Japanese market with me sometime and pick up one of those giant bags of rice. I only wish. I'm trying to get my friend Lisa to do some videos I know she's watching and she's a chef and she lives in Granbury <clears throat> and she has a beautiful garden. She has chickens. She makes wonderful food and I think it would be so much fun for her to take a, give us a tour of her cool garden and all the crazy stuff that she's doing. So Lisa, if you're listening, you're next on doing this. So I put some scallions in here and some of that pepper paste or pepper powder, sorry. That makes it taste really good. And the proper way to eat miso soup is not with a spoon. In Japan, they would not give you one of those big Chinese spoons to eat your miso soup. You just have chopsticks. And then you would take a bite of something in your soup. You can get a hold of it. My great chopstick skills here. And then you would drink the soup out of the bowl. And that's it. You have your miso soup. Oh, it's really good. Hmm, we have to have some of that. And then you have your beautiful bento with all the vegetables and tofu and butternut squash, tomatoes, Japanese sweet potatoes, cucumbers. And remember now, these are all whole food plant-based items. They have no oil. Um, <clears throat> they're healthy. And in this time, we should all be doing whatever we can to you know, make our health as good as we can. And I, I, was, I heard today that all the shelves are empty of dry goods and canned goods and snack foods and cookies, but the produce shelves are full. And I did see that when I went to Whole Foods early this morning. So there's plenty of produce out there. You can go to the grocery store when it's not crowded. Um, I'm 65, so I'm in that group of people who can go early, which I'm going to take advantage of. And when I went to Whole Foods this morning, it wasn't crowded at all. Grab some produce. Produce is cheaper than meat. So, you know, you can make a lot of things with vegetables. You can freeze things if you're not going to use them all. And you can make delicious food. Um, the, to me, this is my comfort food. Miso soup, rice and vegetables. Um, I felt like eating things like this this past week just because 
Um, going out to eat hasn't been that available and I'm not one for getting a lot of to-go food since I know how to cook. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me to go out and buy food. So I'm trying to be more frugal, trying to use what I have here in the house and trying to most of all be healthy. So um, I'll be doing some more videos. If you have a request like Julia Buttermore did of a certain thing you would like for me to make, send me a message or comment below and I will make whatever it is you request, I promise. Unless it's something I can't make. So thank you all so much for watching and hope to see you again soon. Good night.